Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Annie Atwood joining us here once again. Excited to have her here, the founder and owner of Red Boots Reiki. Uh huh. She can work with you anywhere around the world. She's located now in Maine, uh, and her website is redbootsreiki.com. Welcome back today. How are you? Thank you. I am doing well on this. Uh, we have snow up here in Maine. Oh, how much? <laughs> Even snow? if you don't, and it's the perfect snowman snow. Oh, my beautifulness. Like I just said, we haven't had any yet in New York. How much snow have you got so far? We had about 10 inches. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's a beautiful sight. I, you, you look yes. snowy today. You got the cap on. You got the white behind you. It must I be the, the glowing of from the window like the snow. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Annie, for those new listeners today, please introduce yourself to everyone. Thank you. Hi, thank you. I'm Annie Baker Atwood. I am, among other things, a Reiki master. And my job as a Reiki master is to work with you so that I can replenish, refresh, and you go off just feeling completely relaxed and ready to go about your regular life. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the cool things about Reiki is one, I don't actually have to be in the same room as you, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. We can do it over the phone or over Zoom. Um, and two, for uh, working women, maybe not so much working men, but I don't actually touch you. So not only do you remain completely dressed, but your hair and makeup is not touched. So if you need a quick pick me up in between your work day, and if you're having an event that evening, Reiki is the perfect way to recalibrate, reset, and off you go. Oh, fantastic. And someone out there might say, well, what is Reiki? What type of healing? What, what is it? Could you share a little bit more details of what it yeah. is? Thank you. So Reiki is basically a recharge of your energy batteries. So inside of you, just like on your phone, there, there's a lot of teeny little uh, battery icons. And on your phone, you see when it gets depleted and if you get to 20% yep. on your phone, you start to freak out and you really look for a charger. Inside of you, you also have a whole lot of those little batteries circulating around. And my job is to be the power cord that recharges them. I'm not actually a battery. It's not depleting me at all. People do ask that. Uh, and no, I'm simply the charging cord between a whole lot of energy in our universe and you. Amazing. And, um, you know, people, there's, is it seven main chakras that we have? There's yes. more than that, right? So yes. for example, if you're dealing with something like, um, you know, a heartbreak, a heartache in a sense, are you working on the heart chakra? Is that what's affected? Like what happens with the energy there? You know, if someone's going yes. through a breakup or a loss or grief, grieving someone they lost. Those are rough, rough energies. So when I'm working with someone who's in the midst of that, the first thing we do is just kind of give a really big energetic hug. You have um, an energy skin, which is called your aura. And, uh, you know, kind of giving love to your aura is a great first place mm -hmm. to start with that. Um, but yes, your heart chakra is definitely going to be what we would call activated and maybe dysregulated. And so when I hover my hands, here's my little bear, I would hover my hands over Mr. Bear's heart chakra. And it's likely, it kind of feels like um, a rhythm of water circulating. Mm -hmm. And so when I start, if something is definitely needing energy, the circulation is very fast. It's kind of like drinking out of a water fountain when you're yeah. really thirsty. You know, it's a very fast rhythm. And as it starts to relax, That's I can tell that the energy cells are indeed recharged. And I'm not going to make promises and say it's going to take away your heartache because those take time. Mm -hmm. um, especially with grief, uh, but with the benefit of Reiki is it supports your energetic system as you process. Got it. 
This is exciting work that you do. And yes, you don't have to be in person. It could be virtually like this over a Zoom, over the phone. People some who aren't on the Zoom cast, they're listening. You do over the phone as well? I do. I do. I had a funny situation the other time where um, somebody had just texted me, you know, wow, I just got hit with this cold. Um, do you have any time? And I said, oh, sure. Like, you know, I'm heading uh-huh. out the door, but I have some time right now. Um, do you want me to send you a link? She said, no. Can I just FaceTime you? I really don't feel like getting out of bed. <laughs> so yeah. I said, of course. So we just FaceTimed because she really just needed to be under her covers, all cozied up and receiving, you know, the energy shot that I give her. Um, and the other thing is you don't actually need to be connected with me at the time. I can do a remote session and fill you in afterwards, which also freaks people out. Oh, explain, like, what are some of the types of things that you, you, you figure out? <laughs> Um, see energy doesn't have the same time frame that we do. So if I'm working on somebody's energy and they're, you know, in Syria, uh, and this is very true for the military, um, I can monitor and energize a soldier as they go off and run around and do what they do when they run around, um, on their mission um, and then kind of fill them in later. Yeah. Wow. That was uh, a physically tough mission that you just went through. Make sure you're drinking your water. Um, I can tell that your legs are really sore and they'll be like, yeah, you know, because they run and then they squat down to stay safe. I'm a big fan of military. Um, and so I do a lot of sending energy to our soldiers. And yeah. that I, I never charge for that because that's my way of saying thank you for everybody's service. Oh, beautiful. Annie, thank you so much. That's amazing yeah. that you do all that. What, I mean, there's still so much more to what you do and how you can help people. And I don't have any current notes for today. I'm just peeking. Um, but so <laughs> didn't know if there's anything in particular that we should be talking about that I haven't asked you yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to talk today about, um, uh, your, continuance of goals because it's the coming on the end of January people may have made resolutions um and then they're kind of tired of them right now <laughs> so I wanted to touch base on that and talk about how it's really okay to continue a goal you don't need to start something new every single quarter every single year the continuance of goals makes them deepen in you. And yeah. so say you had a, a New Year's goal of, I'd like to clean up the way that I eat. And uh, you're still really loving potato chips. I happen to love potato chips. Me too. Uh, which one's your favorite? Uh, they're called... Um, uh, deep uh, river chips. Oh, never heard of them. I'm Lay's, but now I like Uts better than ever. But yeah. Uts are the best because they don't have any unnatural oils. In them. Is that really? I love that red and that red, that white bag. <laughs> I got to try Deep River. <laughs> what is Deep River? They're out of um, Deep River, Connecticut, and it's all small batched. Oh, and wow. they have just really good flavors. <laughs> and they give a percentage back to uh, local charities, which... That was very close to where I lived in um, Connecticut. So yeah, I like them. But okay, so say we know that a steady stream of potato chips probably isn't the best thing for our digestive tract, mm-hmm. but they are really tasty. So when you come across, you know, this dichotomy, uh, what I recommend is thinking the potato chips were tasting so good and thanking your body for accepting them. Um, And I don't feel that we do enough of thanking our bodies. Yeah. 
There is a lot of thinking food that is prevalent in many religions where we say grace or we say a prayer over our foods. Um, but most of the time, we don't think our bodies. And that is really important to the two sides of the equation. Yeah. So yes, we're appreciative of the food that comes in, but we also need to be appreciative of how we receive. And I know we had had a conversation about um, what did I bring and receiving and how it can feel awkward to a small child to receive a gift that they don't like. Yeah. Um, and that feels awkward. So just imagine that in your head, you've kind of vilified these poor potato chips and they are a gift that you're not going to like. Um, your body isn't going to receive them well. They're going to be tasty yeah. in your mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're not necessarily going to integrate in the same way as if you say, oh my gosh, these potato chips look so good. These potato chips, I am looking forward to them. I am going to sit and enjoy them. And my body is going to enjoy them. And inevitably, because now you've brought mindfulness to this, you're going to eat fewer. Yep. Although any potato chip bag is serving size one. It doesn't matter how big the bag is. Yeah. That was our rule of thumb on the boat. Ah. Um, <laughs> serving size one. I'm like, it's a party pack. Doesn't matter. <laughs> serving size is one. Um, so the more we can prime our bodies, our energetic bodies, as well as our, you know, physical bodies for enjoyment and that reception, mm -hmm. um, it balances the equation mm -hmm. and everybody feels good. And that's not just for eating something, you know, that's all of your chakras. That's going to be, you know, your heart chakra. So if you have gone through, <clears throat> you know, just something that really, really shattered your core. Yeah. Priming yourself to receive someone offering support goes a long way in having that support come in and, and land right. Because I know any time I hit any of those things, I am a closed book. Don't talk to me. I don't want your input. I don't, you know, I get very closed because I just want to be left alone and handle it myself. Um, and that's very, very common. Uh, and it takes a while for me to be able to, you know, take out a hurt, process it, um, kind of demagnetize the hurt part of it. And which, which is a fun process demagnetizing um, kind of an energetic overlay of an incident uh, can go a long way to making it sting less, especially if it's, you know, of a, a breakup kind of thing. And I'll be really honest. Uh, don't try to rush getting over a death because you don't, <sighs> you just process it differently. Every developmental stage you go through. So I know I've worked with um, women, not as many men, but women who are, are grieving and they feel because they've been told or they've read, you know, oh, you're supposed, you're supposed to be um, done grieving for the death of your husband in X amount of years. Um, I'm like, no, it doesn't really work that way. There's yeah. no timeline yeah. on that. So take your time and let those feelings bubble up and know 
that your body, your energetic body has a really, really good system of processing. And yeah, it can feel like the breath just got knocked out of you. But if you can stay with it and just let that dissolve a little bit, the next time will feel shorter, maybe not less intense, but it won't be the same duration. But back to if you've had a spat with one of your uh, friends, and I'm going to actually use the example of um, a same like a a platonic relationship. So say you and your friend were super, super tight going through the last semester of college. We're just going to use that as an example. Um, And just, you know, you're always chatting, you're always texting, you're just super close. And then you drift. And it's not you know, uh, I broke up with you. you, you've just drifted apart. And that can feel a lot of different feels. It can feel, you know, sad, nostalgic, like, oh, I really miss that. Um, it can feel ashamed, like, oh, I wasn't a good enough friend to stay on the dance card. Um, and it can feel a little angry, like, oh, they're not my friend anymore. I'm going to be angry about this. And so all those different feels get tied up into an event that was pretty natural. People outgrow situations and people outgrow relationships. Um, And so when you can demagnetize all of those feels and and focus on the fact that yeah, it was a fantastic relationship while we were there. And I'm going to remember it as a fantastic relationship. And I'm going to set free all of those not great feels so that I can really remember that, wow, that person was a really integral part of college. And they may come back into circulation later, but right now we're not in the same orbit and that's okay. And that's one of the ways um, when you put your hand on your heart chakra. Have you ever seen the snow globe? I love snow globes. And and when you shake them, all the, all the snow mm-hmm. falls. So if you imagine your heart chakra as a snow globe. Okay. And all of those bits of glitter are swirling around. And just visualize them settling. And now it's clear. And you can see through it again. All of those little bits of glitter were the parts of confusion that were kind of obscuring Mm -hmm. what is at the center of the snow globe. And when they settle, you can see, oh, yep, it's still there. My central intention is still there, still intact. We just couldn't see it. And now we can again. But if you know, you're halfway done and you shake it again, (laughs) all the glitter goes back up, right? So you really just need to relax in and settle into your breath work, however it is. Um, I did a lot of running and it sounds odd, but I would settle as I ran just from the rhythm of the feet and the breathing. My mind would just de-escalate, calm right down. I'm like, oh, Hmm. yeah. And it just remind everyone how we could reach you. They're just tuning in. It's 
redbootsreiki.com or uh, redbootsreiki at gmail.com. If you want to email me, if you go on my website, my phone number is there. Shoot me a text if you want to work with me. Um, And one of the other things is if you want to get a group to work together, I work with groups all the time. Um, it, It can be kind of a fun way to yep. start a girls weekend, you know, hop on the call. And what's the wakey reiki? I saw that on your site. <laughs> that is a My group egg- morning. Oh, is that what it is? Wakey. Yeah. I was made me think of wakey eggs and bakey. What was that little slogan we used to say? Wakey, wakey, <laughs> wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. It was a little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wakey reiki is just the idea that you're going to start your day completely aligned with all of your energy. You're going to yeah. stay in bed. Get your coffee. You don't need to be on camera. I'm going to be on camera. I'm going to have my my little Mr. Bear prop um, to just guide you through. And it's fast. It's a very, it's a half hour. It's quick. First thing in the morning and a great way to start your morning. Um, I run my energy every single morning before I get up. And so I thought, why am I not offering that to others? Mm-hmm. Wow. And then also you work with animals too, right? I do. Is that your I... cat on your website or is that, is it, <laughs> oh, black and white? That's, <laughs> that's kitty. <laughs> and uh, when I was living in New Haven and driving up to Maine, it's about an eight hour drive. And so I would reiki kitty before we started and kitty was conked out. The entire time, um, which is good because it used to be Kitty would meow from Connecticut to the main border, which is about four hours. Wow. So we learned we learned that. <laughs> so animals can benefit from it too. Like what animals? Yes. Like dog, cats. I mean, dogs birds. and cats. There is. Yep, yep. I think the funniest thing in my Reiki manual said if you are reikiing fish, leave them in the tank. <laughs> Wait, wait to pick it up. <laughs> That's a good I'm idea. Like, good, good. Oh my goodness. Is good. that really part of is that part of the work what, when you become a Reiki master? That's part of the oh my no one's ever told me that. It actually says that. <laughs> it actually says that. Yeah. Um, there are some Reiki masters who work a lot with horses. Um I'm not one of them. I could certainly help you find one if needed, but uh yeah, large animal Reiki is we're all trained, but where you spend the most of your hours is what you're most familiar Mm -hmm. with. So I'm most familiar with um, COVID recovery and breast cancer recovery in terms of the medical grade, but there's (laughs) definitely, there were definitely members of my class. We had 20 of us go through and it took uh, seven months. Um, and the manual is enormous. Wow. Wow. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Intense. Yeah. It, it was and intense. Also, I know I read earlier that you, you offer a COVID clean, uh, clearing. What, what is that as well? Yes. So uh, COVID lingers in your body and where it lingers depends on where you are compromised. Mm-hmm. So for some, it lingers in the lungs. Some it's... Um, your front brain, some it's your, uh, your, the joints yeah. in your body. And so what I do is I can draw out mm-hmm. the energy of COVID that is kind of pouncing on and sitting in where, uh, in, in your body. Okay. And it is one that it's, uh, it's not the relaxing ones because I need you fully alert so that we can really see, is it, you know, your right lung, is it your left lung? Let's look at where the energy is really, really stuck. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, I use um, a pendulum. And so I'll move along the meridians, which are the secondary, secondary highways, your secondary pathways of energy. And we can see where the block is and then I can just remove the block. Uh, and especially for folks who have long COVID, um, people have found that very, very helpful. Yeah. 
Awesome. Because wow. they can see it and then we send it love and I show you how to strengthen that area. Um, and that's an interesting one. When you are strengthening an area, you go to an area that's very strong, one of your chakras that's very strong, and you want to create a pathway from where the block is to the strength. So you would put your hand, um, mm. I know this is, this is my technical one. So say you had a blockage in your elbow and uh, your heart chakra was very strong. You would have one hand on your heart chakra and one hand on your elbow. And that would bring through the energy to um, kind of circumvent or, and we would figure this out. We, okay. You may be putting your hand right on your elbow. And so it would look like elbow and heart. Okay. And and I would just ask you to sit that way. All right. You know, for a certain part of your yeah. day. Not long. All Not right. Long. Thank you so much. We're out of time. My goodness. Um, let's remind us, Andy, how we can reach out to you specifically, please. Redbootsreiki.com. Uh just click the book now button or email me, redbootsreiki at gmail.com. Find my phone number and text me. And you can also find me on YouTube. I do a weekly Reiki to the Rescue. All of the segments are a minute something, and those are fun. Got it. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you here. Enjoy the beautiful snow. And thank, thank you for doing you. the work you do. Thank you for being here again and uh, occupying space with us. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.